Hey everyone, this is Antonio Redgrave. Even though I primarily upload short videos and occasional video game related content, I'm going to start a new segment here on my channel, making videos where I talk briefly about a topic I'm passionate about or something I feel like I need to address. I don't have a name for it just yet, it might pop up as I'm putting it together or maybe when I start the next episode. I don't know. So uh, yeah, welcome to this new thing I decided to do. I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to leave comments about what's being covered in the video or something I should address in a future video. So with that out of the way, let's begin. I would like to stress that what I have to say about the topic is entirely opinion based and from my experience discussing it with my friends and colleagues, my opinions are in the minority on this particular topic. This is something that's bothered me ever since I've experienced it for the first time and it's about time that someone says something about it. All I'm asking is for people to hear me out, see why this bothers me so much and hopefully you'll realize that maybe this particular thing bothers you too. As you could probably tell from the title of this video, the feature of loot drops in our current generation of gaming is a problem. I will mostly be referring to the loot boxes in Overwatch as well as addressing the mother boxes for Injustice 2, as these are the games that I personally play the most that have this feature. So what is a loot drop? Well, it's essentially a reward box you get for playing the game. These drops contain cosmetics for the game that are completely randomized so when you open it, you can get things like skins, profile pictures, and in-game currency. The content's main purpose is allowing you to customize your character so that when you go online, your character won't be the same as the ones you fight. In most cases, you get one every time you level up your profile or do a series of special challenges to get multiple numbers of them. Now like I said, these boxes are completely randomized, so you don't know what's in the box. You can get comments with occasional rares, or sometimes you can get epic legendary skins that are hard to come by. While I do think that a system of loot drops is a fun option for games with a wide variety of characters, there's just one problem with it. The lack of guarantee. In games that have a massive roster of characters and customizable items, a loot system that randomly gives you customizable gear and skins for your characters can be off-putting. Especially when you don't like using a wide variety of characters. The developers of Overwatch have stated that they wanted to have this system in place to encourage the usage of multiple characters. While this does get people to experiment around with different characters, this is not how everyone likes to work. It's a good idea to have many different characters with different talents and types in your arsenal, but players such as myself are not going to be encouraged to play a character just because I got a super cool skin for them. In my games, I personally use the characters I use because I either like their playstyle, the character in general, or have a personal connection with them. I don't have Robin as my main for Injustice 2 because I got this super cool looking sword from a mother box. I use Robin because I like Robin. I like the character, I like his playstyle, and even his attitude towards the other fighters puts a smile on my face from time to time. Bleed, you sick, twisted maniac. The same applies to Overwatch, but to a lesser extent. In an objective-based shooter, you can't necessarily stick to a single character and expect to win, which I completely understand and I myself use a multitude of characters and switch for the particular situation. However, there are some characters that I refuse to use, as well as characters I use a lot more than others. I don't care how many legendary skins you give me for May. I don't care if you give me a special event highlight intro for Mercy. I don't care if I get every single piece of customizable options for a character I have only played for 5 minutes. My top characters right now are currently Tracer, D.Va, Farah, Symmetra, and Lucio. I have a lot of playtime with these characters, so why does the game decide to give me legendaries for characters I don't use? This is the problem I've always had with loot boxes, and even when I play online and openly express my frustrations to other people, I seem to be the only one that's really bothered by it. If this system of loot boxes is legitimately randomized, I want someone right now who is really good at math. Please, please do this for me in an algorithm or something. I want you to tell me what the odds are of, again, randomly, pulling a legendary Christmas event season skin for Torbjorn four times from approximately 90 loot boxes. Keep in mind, this is when I barely used Torbjorn. So naturally, when the Uprising event happened after I used him a pretty fair amount, how many times did I pull his legendary? None. Instead... I got Orisa's legendary twice when she was a brand new character, and I had barely any playtime with her. I'm sure many of you have ran into a similar situation, and maybe it's bothered you to some degree, maybe not, I don't know. But just to prove my point once again, I'm going to show you my total playtime with each of my characters thus far, and you're just going to have to believe me what I'm telling you. So, like I said before, my favorite characters are Tracer and D.Va. 
I have the most playtime with them amongst the wide variety of heroes. The skins I've pulled for Tracer have been the commons and two legendaries, non-event ones by the way. I have pulled two legendary skins for D.Va, one being an event skin, and I pulled one highlight intro at the beginning levels of Tracer, and the uprising intro for D.Va. So again, keeping in mind, my favorite characters are, on the record, the two that I use the most. The next being Farah, which I also barely pulled most of this. This is all just purchased. Now, let's go to May. I have three legendaries for May, some of which I've pulled twice. Now, uh, how much playtime do I have with her? Seriously? What the fuck? Obviously, the game wants me to try May. Maybe the game thinks I'll like May. Maybe I'll like her playstyle. Or her personality. Or maybe just the way she looks, I don't know, but guess what? I don't like May. Why? Well, as if it wasn't obvious that I don't use her. At all. I have used her in Mystery Heroes. In fact, I've played all of the heroes, whether it's in Mystery Heroes or Quick Play. And guess what, Overwatch? I don't like May. So stop giving me stuff for May because no matter how many times I pull a legendary skin for May, or a highlight intro for May, or a dancing emote for May, I will never willingly use her. Instead, I should be rewarded for the countless amount of hours I've spent on Tracer, or Diva, or Farah. And I know what you're thinking. Maybe instead of complaining on the internet about how I didn't pull the skin I wanted, maybe I can use the currency I receive from the loot box and the currency I receive from the duplicates to buy the skins I want. I do. But really, think about how little currency the game rewards you to buy items with insanely high prices. Not to mention, event items are triple the original price rarity. It's nearly impossible to buy the $3,000 legendary skin you're drooling over when the game rewards you with 200 currency for a legendary duplicate. Even less for duplicate commons and rares. On a side note, the loot box microtransactions have always bothered me to an insane degree. Why anyone would pay Blizzard more money than they're supposed to just so they can have more gambles on loot boxes is baffling to me. I would understand implementing currency transactions like most other games, but paying for more loot boxes is literally dumping your money into a pile and setting it on fire. I know the developers have acknowledged this issue and fixed the loot box system to where duplicates are less likely and the currency you earn from them is increased. But that's not really my main issue here. What has to happen is a system that Injustice 2 has tried implementing in their loot drops, and that's character bias, which theoretically increases the chances of pulling gear for not only your favorite characters, but the character you use to obtain said loot drop. Meaning the more matches I spend playing my two main characters, Robin and Red Hood, the more gear I will get for those characters. And that does work. Kinda. While the game drops pieces of gear at the end of most matches, they're typically commons or rares, Rarely do they give us epic gear or different ability moves we can equip for the character. And while I stand by my previous statement that I play the characters more for the characters themselves and their particular playstyle, it is really nice seeing gear that turns Robin into Nightwing as well as other little easter eggs for the characters in the game. On to another example. Most people have complained on Facebook forums, Twitter forums that the abilities are hard to come by. And they are. You get one ability once your character reaches levels 10 and 20. Other than that, you need to either do repeated golden multiverse events that grant you a random ability, there's that word again, random, or cross your fingers and hope for the best. When the game first came out, there were two abilities I wanted. The first was Green Arrow's Teleport, and the second was Robin's Staff of Grayson. I have played countless hours as a both Robin and Green Arrow hoping for these abilities to drop from a loot box or at the end of the match, but they never did. The dream only died once the developers at Netherrealm switched the abilities from common to epic. About a month after the game came out, I did get the Staff of Grayson at the end of a match playing as Robin, and to this day, I still don't have Arrow's Teleport. I don't really care too much for the other abilities in the game, but when I heard people complaining about the cat call ability for Catwoman to get a trophy for her, I checked to see if I had it. Lo and behold, there it is. It's sad to think that an ability you want so badly takes countless hours to obtain, whereas ones you could really care less about are given to you at an instant. Even then, I still don't have the trophy because I really couldn't care less about it, and that just proves my point. It's the characters themselves that drive me to use them instead of something I get randomly out of a fucking loot box. So what I'm going to do now is make a suggestion for a solution. I don't want trademarks or anything, developers. I'm just telling you what I think should happen. And if someone were to hear this and implement it into one of these AAA games, then God bless you. Okay, you ready? 
here it is. What we need is a fully working character bias system within these kinds of games, thereby increasing the chances of getting items for characters we want and to get everyone on the internet to stop bitching about it. How does this work? Well, for starters, it needs to be optional. Giving the ability to turn a bias on and off satisfies both parties, those who want bias and those who want randomness. Even I'll admit, most of the time, it doesn't matter to me. However, when an Overwatch event comes on and I see a cool skin I want, I would appreciate a bias that allows me to obtain the specific skin I want. Let's say you get one loot box for every hour of Overwatch you play. In that hour, you use Tracer 60% of the time, Mercy 25% of the time, and the last 15% are tanks. When I open the loot box, the possibility of a Tracer item should be high. A Mercy item should have a slight possibility, maybe a low chance for one common tank item, and the last item will be randomized. Earning currency from duplicates still applies normally, as well as pulling currency from the loot box itself. Or hell, just give us currency in every box. That would be nice. Where have I seen this before? Now, I will also admit people might not be on board with this. I understand that. So here is my other suggestion. Feel free to take this one too, developers. Earning your customizable skins and abilities through challenges. Do you remember when skins had to be earned and weren't just given away randomly in a loot drop system? Because I sure as hell do, and it feels a lot better that way. In games like Devil May Cry 3, where you had to beat the game on various difficulties to get the cool alternate costumes. Games like Call of Duty Black Ops 2, going through various challenges to get the gold and the diamond guns. Going to the Hall of Justice and Star Lab challenges to get the alternate skins for every character in the game. These items were guaranteed because of your dedication and skill with the game. Not because you got lucky on a dumb loot drop, and Blizzard understands this. Competitive points to give your character a golden gun was a fantastic idea, and I am so close to getting my first golden gun because of the amount of commitment I decided to put into it. The same went for D.Va's officer skin. Going through 10 games of Heroes of the Storm was a pain in the ass, but I felt like I accomplished something. I felt like I earned that skin. I didn't feel that way when I pulled her anniversary skin because it took three weeks of loot box hunting, grinding away currency, until I eventually pulled it, then using my currency for the Tracer skin. Now, I know that one person on a small YouTube channel advising companies to implement this practice isn't going to do anything. I would just hope that those who are sick and tired of the loot box system speak up and preach for a change. Skins and customizable content should be earned through character loyalty, dedication, and player skill, not because you got lucky or grinded currency from duplicate drops. On another side note, this final statement is directed to the guys at Blizzard who thought it was a good idea to put the Officer Diva and Oni Genji skins in Overwatch loot boxes after locking them in a Heroes of the Storm Nexus challenge, and after grinding away 10 matches in Heroes of the Storm. Okay. Dear developers at Blizzard, fuck you. My name is Antonio Redgrave, and I'll see you guys soon.